Hello, I'm Alessandro Colombano. I'm a senior lecturer at the Birmingham School of Architecture and Design at Birmingham City University. And this is my presentation for Education Design and Practice Conference. For this, I'm gonna talk about STEAM in the city, STEAM design thinking uh, in the context of Birmingham, a city in the Midlands, UK, and in particular, a facility called STEAM House. But firstly, I'd like to introduce the principle of STEAM, first coined by Harvey White, a co-founder of a telecoms company. It was about combining science, tech, engineering and maths with art in its broader sense. And to quote White, he mentions, we simply cannot complete and compete in the new economy unless we do something now about creativity and innovation. So it's about how the arts adds value to technology uh, and, and other uh, sciences uh, for, for progression. The approach of encompassing art practices and design thinking is used predominantly in higher educational institutions in North America and is gaining traction uh, in the UK as well through this specific STEAM approach. For this presentation, I'd like to discuss how within our university, BCU, and in particular the School of Architecture and Design, we're interpreting STEAM design thinking and how it's been applied in the context of Birmingham's creative scene and manufacturing sectors. We've done this by establishing and developing a STEAM house, an innovation and prototyping centre, housed within a 1500 square metre facility in Digbeth, which the area is a former, in part of a former industrial heartland of, of Birmingham. But this project is not just about a building or a facility, it's conceived as a programme with a broader conceptual idea for a response to the contextual factors that affect creativity and entrepreneurial engagement in the city. This starts with its heritage. And we look at the coat of arms here illustrated on the left hand side. We've got the artist and the engineer, supporters of the city representing identity and industry respectively. In 2013, Eastside Projects, an artist-run uh, gallery located in, in Digbeth, published the sixth edition of their user manual of how their creative organisation is run. You can find these online on their website. Artists Peter Nencini and James Langdon interpreted the supporters of Birmingham as a layered urban landscape, questioning the role of the artists in, in its development. So whilst this presentation is about setting up a facility like Steamhouse, I'm more interested in the perspective of how artists and an artist-led gallery can work with a university, and who are the cultural engineers needed to produce a facility like Steamhouse and how it's run. Eastside Projects worked closely uh, with uh, Birmingham City University to establish Steamhouse. So if we look a bit closer at their uh, outputs and their, their background to see how their influence has informed uh, the thinking behind the facility itself as well as the universities. In many of Eastside Project shows their vision as a gallery for the public is to question the role of the gallery for forging a new city, to reclaim Birmingham as a city of production. This is exemplified by Production Show, a, a two-year series of exhibitions using the artist and engineer as a modus operandi, pairing up artists with different engineers to fabricate their work. If, if to quote from their press release, the gallery is a machine for the production of art only in collaboration with others. Users of production show are imagined as early adopters of our future production city. Art extracts raw materials, transforms them into social outputs, that question and provide services and experiences. Production show will encompass multiple systems, materials and routes of production from industry to digital, craft to DIY, hammer to iPhone. So for Eastside projects, it's by working with our hands on a micro scale, in this case through the artworks and the artifacts generated, where large scale ideas of change can occur. And that's that's what they see their part of their role as a, as a gallery space. In parallel, the Birmingham School of Architecture and Design, we have our own approach to design thinking. 
where entrepreneurialism has been a, a kind of a tenant of its kind of thinking. Ever since the 1950s, we use innovative teaching practices such as live build projects, cited as early as 1951, to engage how education and in particular educators, how academics can play a part in the city. The images you see extract are extract from the Architect and Building News Journal in 1963. It describes the city as both place and spirit that evokes a spontaneous reaction, both in its industry but also how the School of Architecture has, has responded to this context. So for Steam House we have two supporters, the university and the gallery. The university, founded on vocational colleges including the School of Architecture, the gallery, Eastside Projects, a self-described artist-run multiverse, set up in 2008. So why did we want to set up a facility like Steamhouse? Well, through mutual uh, conversations, we talked about retaining graduates, retaining and improving talent, improving facilities for young creatives, creating an environment where innovation, innovative new practices emerge, both in studio but also beyond into the city. These two supporters work together in a disruptive process to lead to innovative ideas and details to set up a, a, a building facility in form. And we'd like to kind of begin how to look at how these have impacted on the creative culture of, of Birmingham. It's also to look at how, how this industry informs our own brand of innovation. The City of Making Report in 2018 investigates the state of manufacturing. It concludes of the rising interest in local production, products and objects or services that are well made, but for consumers, the place of production uh, is just as important as uh, the project uh, produced itself. It indicates while, while universities and technical colleges provide training, there's a lack of flexible space and technology to bring a full design process together to form an innova innovation-driven manufacturing cluster. Rarely are spaces available that are conducive for entrepreneurship and to support the shift from product development to communication and production. So this is where we saw the role of both ESA projects and the university uh, to develop Steamhouse for. So looking at Birmingham in more detail, I want to look at its heritage and its history and, and describe how some of these, uh, these factors have, have influenced our own thinking. Birmingham as a medieval market town soon developed into a, an industrial city in the heart of England. The engraving on the left hand side by H. W. Brewer depicts like the civic core you see at the foreground with the, the, the industrial uh, heartland of Digbeth uh, further into the background. One reason for its industrial growth was the fact that the city wasn't an incorporated or a controlled borough until 1838. It was not subject to specific codes or regulations in other, like other cities were. It attracted an independently minded class of immigrant who had much to contribute to, the, to society and to the economy. Additionally, there were no more traditional guilds to regulate apprenticeships in craftsmanship and industry. There were smaller family-run workshops. Well, these were more agile and their ability to innovate was in that uh, specific aspect of efficient production modes for tools rather than large-scale, overly ingenious technical innovations for mass manufacture. The clustering of these workshops were essential to share their networks of workers, material, supply chains, production uh, and uh, new ideas. Emerging from this period was the Lunar Society, a group of industrialists, scientists, uh, thinkers and artists. They believed in a process of enlightenment through democracy of knowledge. Joseph Wright here, a philosopher giving the lecture on a uh, orrery in 1766 used a lamp to simulate path of the sun. To members of the Lunar Society, science was about knowledge and interest in the material world, but it also look at, looked at the arts in a broader definition. It wasn't just about fine arts, but the craftsmanship of mechanical arts and how arts can in, improve manufacturing and industry. 
For the society, several factors were at play during this time. It was about creating an environment, uh, a, a culture of inventing, uh, designing and creating. It was also about free from institutional regulation, which was kind of key to their, to, to their freedom and their ability to innovate. But if we swiftly move forward, looking at Digbeth, now depicted and defined as a creative quarter in political and social circles, Creative industries located amongst, among, uh, are located amongst the fabric of the 19th century warehouses. Birmingham currently has the largest number of patents uh, uh, recorded and uh, new enterprises started in the UK outside of London. However, in terms of urban renewal, the area is just classed as a creative quarter. There's a lack of detailed policy to nurture the entrepreneurial spirit other than these kind of wide-scale master plans which are about infrastructure or economic growth or housing, etc. Again, referring back to the Cities of Macon report, it highlights how manufacturing is an important factor to the city. More than is recognised, it's about building resilience, stability, prosperity, well-being. Enhancing manufacturing provisions in the city provide opportunities for, for the future. Distributed production has the potential for local ownership and involvement, something which large-scale centralised production rarely does. Urban residents have the ability to make their city in a way that's not been possible before. And this connects with the idea of Industry 4.0, the age of mass customization. So we need to kind of see how this uh, 4.0 can fit into Birmingham, individually tailoring items at scale. <laughs> But we think that kind of Birmingham is well placed. Its industrial heritage is based on this kind of small scale handcrafted technology uh, and, and manufacture. It thrived on, on the kind of decorative uh, items of buttons, trinkets, pens, toys, tools, all created through these small uh, workshops where they shared ideas on, on steam mechanization. Steamhouse were working with artists uh, to look at new and existing technology to embed it within their practice to create new ideas and applications uh, for industrial sectors such as well-being, health, uh, etc. But before we go into Steamhouse uh, in more detail, I want to talk about the, the kind of lead up to it. And this started with conversations between uh, colleagues within the School of Architecture as well as Eastside projects, in particular Ruth Claxton, Associate Director at Eastside. Through a small Arts Council research grant looking at case study visits, uh, we then developed and produced a proposal on Birmingham production space, which was about a national scale for production for artists and designers. Looking at surveys, understanding the context and the, the landscape for how creatives in the city make, produce and distribute work. But we're also looking at data around the city. This one more recently from uh, Birmingham Youth Trend, which is developed by uh, uh, Beat Freaks, uh, a creative organisation in the city. It's often touted that you, uh, Birmingham is the youngest city in Europe, with almost 40% of the population under 25. But the Brum Youth Trend report that from its respondents, over 60% of the arts feel that it's important to the city, or the arts are important, but only 54% state that they, they don't go to any creative events. So there's a disconnect through, uh, through uh, the younger demographic about the value of the arts, but they don't see the opportunities that are available. In addition to this, we're also, as academics, looking at how national policy is impacting on the design and creative community. The UK Government Department of Culture, Media and Sport uh, reports that there's a 50% increase in UK GVA for the creative industry between 2010 and 17. That's a huge positive and we contribute enormously to the UK economy. But at the same time, the Design Council in Designing for a Future Economy report indicates that 50% of schools have closed down art and design departments since 2000. 
So we need to think about what will happen to the future pipeline for the design industry and also the, the kind of academic context. So in this background, we'll look at how we developed Steamhouse and, the, and specifically the, the, the kind of finer details within it. And we go back to these two supporters. We have the university and the gallery, BCU and Eastside Projects, each extending the networks to fund and develop a program of activity. The total funding for the project was 3.5 million. The university, uh, we access local enterprise partnership funding uh, via EU ERDF. The Birmingham City University also provided match funding. Whilst Eastside projects were able to access Arts Council funding for hardware and research and visits, events, and to disseminate and to disseminate our knowledge and network. So alongside Eastside projects, we looked at the hard and soft infrastructure required to establish such a such a facility. We can draw uh, parallels to, to milestones of the Lunar Society, uh, where they saw uh, innovation dependent on exchange and with that the physical infrastructure needed to facilitate exchange not just through conversations but through physical uh, kind of haptic qualities and, and making. Matthew Bolton and John Fothergill, uh, industrialists, industrialists of the 18th century, developed Soho House, a manufactory uh, which brought together different processes and easy access to power and supplies. <laughs> The layout was arranged in different workshops according to uh, products made and techniques used. Considering how we've developed our own uh, building with the funding secured, the university leased a kind of former car showroom on Digbeth High Street, the main arterial route through the uh, creative quarter, which also used to be the former industrial heart of the city. But the program is not just a built form. We didn't see innovation uh, to set up the facility as linear but interactive. These exchanges built a community around the culture of making. So we started to develop a series of public events and talks. It's about generating conversation. We did this as far back as uh, late 2014. We, we hosted these at Eastside Projects and asked people to imagine Birmingham production space as it was known then as open and how members would use the, the facility and what it would mean to them. So just as is depicted here in Thomas Rollinson's chemistry lecture at the Surrey Institute, where the Lunar Society frequently interacted between other societies and other groups of stakeholders, for them it produced a great spurt uh, of ideas and thinking which resulted in, to, in the Enlightenment period for the West Midlands. The free exchange of ideas helped them create innovative new manufacturing and scientific breakthroughs. However, towards the end of what they found was that period of time, the science was becoming institutionalised within organisations to protect their own intellectual property, therefore restricting access to knowledge. This counters the economic and democratic right to knowledge uh, their success depended on. Open source information is vital for the creative city, both then and now. Industry 4.0 depends on access to information, and open source data is transforming businesses and methods of production. You just need to look at initiatives like the WikiHouse or OpenDesk uh, to see how this works. One of the roles that the university plays is opening up access, but its policy and, admi and admissions to courses raises perceived social barriers uh, in education. So the intention for Steamhouse at the outset was to break that perceived barrier. The building acts as a shop front to the city. It's not behind these, these uh, secluded uh, educational institutions. Dissecting enclosed spaces to the rear of the building, it opens up a continuous and visible movement all the way through to the street edge, all the way back to the rear studios. But being visible is not the same as being accessible. There are a number of uh, public spaces that we've incorporated into the design of the building and its layout. This diagrammatic plan shows the orange spaces at the front, indicating co-working and event rooms that face the street and the city beyond, while the blue spaces indicate the five production uh, facilities 
as well as the green uh, squares indicate studios towards the rear of the room. But if we focus on these public spaces, it's about creating civic rooms for the city. And we call these a kind of lab space where ideas are tested through conversations and events. Earlier I presented some of the smaller tactics Eastside Projects uses and how the gallery performs and space to make art public and how they converse about this. It's about working with our hands on a micro scale that large scale changes can occur. So working with Eastside Projects we've considered everything and how it functions all the way down to furniture and fittings, down to self-made uh, components. We looked at staging the completion of the workshop spaces first to including a CNC machine. So then we were able to, to facilitate and fabricate our own furniture and tables, which gives it a sense of uniqueness uh, to the space. The collectivity employed in the construction of the project has dispersed the sense of ownership of what the space is and how it can be used. Our lab event room presents a democratic environment to sustaining culture through public talks, meetings, discussions of various formats. We let other organisations host their own events and festivals. Behind the public uh, and secure line, we have a series of production spaces where training can occur and uh, inductions can occur. We have master classes as well to kind of start thinking about ideas for future innovative practices. These are both generated by technicians which are researchers in their own right, but also through our members as well, through a kind of knowledge exchange. We have uh, a number of different members which are from various backgrounds, not necessarily cognate to, to design or art disciplines. So we're training the people up at different levels. Our spaces are designed to prototype and demonstrate what is possible for, for the artists, designers and businesses and many of the manufacturing companies and researchers that join us in, in uh, formal collaborations. For us, Steamhouse is just as much a creating a cultural production through food as it is through the kind of machines that make it. So we're thinking about holistically what do the members want? What, what is required with those soft skills as well as uh, through the hard tacit knowledge? And so food plays a, a vital role for our membership. It's looking at that kind of cycle and how they engage with each other and with the spaces. Because our members come from a number of different backgrounds, we look at various workshops on design thinking using business canvases models uh, uh, and, and kind of subverting them, working with uh, approaches in uh, uh, disseminating and crit spaces like Eastside Projects uses, but also design workshops that we incorporate in our, in our own School of Architecture and Design. We look at the idea of how things are made looking at the supply chain needed, um, all the way testing through to the value of aesthetics. So we're trying to kind of uh, bring education into a broader realm rather than kind of distinct qualifications that you find in universities. In The Creative City, New Field Conditions, an essay by Jan Verwien, he talks about the cultural and physical bridges needed to, uh, to create between two different types of spaces you find in a city. Firstly is the spaces of flows, areas that link nodes, movement, people, goods. And then there's spaces of place, areas that provide meaning to people and their everyday lives. In his essay, Yan concludes that new cultural industries need to build bridges between the, these types of spaces. And this is where Steamhouse needs to kind of move towards and what we're working towards. There is a clear role here for the university, as well as an arts organisation, to play. It's about kind of creating these, these uh, cultural bridges, as it were. So finally, we've been open for about a year now, and we've started to, to, to measure the impact, as indicated by some of the, 
the facts here indicate it. We're looking at connecting the physical, the space of flows for artists, designers, entrepreneurs, and connect them to kind of be starting to produce new products, which are able to be commercialized, distributed, uh, experiences uh, uh, to, to kind of learn and develop from. It also needs to create a place that means something for our members, as well as more impactful, meaningful uh, production of objects uh, for the city and how mechanisms of industry and institutions contribute to the creative culture of Birmingham. So it's not just purely an economic uh, facility, something to the improve the economies of scale, but about improving how it connects to its location of Birmingham and tapping into that heritage uh, of, of Birmingham's uh, historical industry. So that's where I'd like to leave it there for this presentation. Thank you for, for watching and listening. If you're interested in STEAM Design Thinking and STEAM House, uh, please do feel free to contact me uh, through the channels that you see here. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.